joking me with my what charge? Your, what your... Tension on Texas campuses between protesters and law enforcement. Divest from genocide now! Dozens arrested as officers move in, some in riot gear. Equal protest is a right! The crackdown raising free speech questions over what is and what is not allowed, and the response could have a long-lasting impact. Who are the protesters and what do they want? And why is it fueling this forceful response? The deployment of this type of force is used when there is intelligence that there are threats to the university. Today, we take an in-depth look as Texas campuses brace for more conflict. What happens here changes the world. Let's make it for the better. Produced from the Capitol in Austin and airing statewide, this is the award-winning State of Texas. Hello, and thank you for joining us for this special edition of State of Texas. I'm Josh Hinkle, and this week we're coming to you from the University of Texas at Austin campus. We're on the South Lawn near the tower, and this has been the scene of pro-Palestinian protests that led to conflict and arrests. We told you last week about the protests. This week brought an escalation, both from protesters and the officers ordered to move them out. Ryan Chandler looks closer at the clash on campus. <laughs> Arrests and unrest as UT battles with protesters for a second time. Dozens detained as DPS troopers try to remove an encampment on UT's South Lawn. Once they sent all the police and everything here is when the crowd really started to form. The university warned students to disperse or be arrested for trespassing and disorderly conduct. The demonstrators defiant, linking arms as they're forcibly removed one by one. Many carried out by their arms and legs. You're joking me with my what's charge! Your, what's your... UT says they're trying to keep campus safe and orderly as students study for finals. The disorder escalating. Pepper spray and flashbangs ring through the crowd. Oh my God. Oh my God. By five, the police had left and protesters returned to the place they started. I don't think the students are leaving anytime soon, and I think they're completely entitled to stay there. It's their campus. Ryan joins us now. These protests have sparked controversy nationwide, but the protesters here at UT are asking for a very specific list of demands, right? They are, and it's been interesting to see how those demands have evolved over just the last 10 days. It started initially as a protest over the war in Gaza, and it certainly still is, but now it has rallied an even larger section of the campus community over what they see as violations of free speech. The demands are in four parts. The, the first one is divestment from Israeli assets by the University of Texas. Now, to make a very complicated issue brief, it is these protesters' belief that UT has a financial role in the war in Gaza through investments in certain weapons manufacturing companies through the, the system-wide endowment. Um, there is some money in companies like Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, things like that. And, and they believe that the university should have no financial stake in those companies. And they're calling uh, to remove those investments from uh, the, the fund that powers the entire system. The, the next two demands deal with academic and legal immunity from prosecution or, or disciplinary action for uh, their protests, whether they were arrested for them or not. And then the fourth is the resignation of President Jay Hartzell. This comes as about 600 faculty members sign a letter of no confidence saying that they can't trust President Hartzell anymore to protect students both physically and in their rights to free expression. Of course, there's no indication that, that Hartzell is even considering doing that, but that is what these students are asking for. Well, you've been speaking with students and university officials all week. How is the administration really responding to those demands? I don't think the demands are being taken seriously at all. I mean, if you just consider divestment, there are certain legal, uh, political, and financial barriers that would make that uh, nearly impossible to do. Uh, the university is is trying to impress upon the public that these are not uh, students who are protesting in good faith, but uh, they are in large part outside agitators or what they call professional protesters who have come in trying to disrupt campus and, and really take over this South Lawn like we've seen happen in, at Columbia or Yale or USC. Uh, they've pointed to rules violations, whether it's setting up encampments or um, assaulting police officers. So they're, they're really trying to win this public information battle that um, 
these protesters are not ones to be sympathized with, and they're not just trying to protect free speech. In fact, uh, there was just an op-ed that Jay Hartzell wrote in the Houston Chronicle that, that said straight up, this was not a protest, this was criminal trespassing. So they're really trying to justify the police response in that way. Yeah, free speech rights are also a big concern. You've spoken with both law enforcement and First Amendment attorneys about how students have been treated. What are they saying? Well, there are serious concerns that the university exercised an unconstitutional prior restraint when specifically on Wednesday, before the encampments were up, before we saw any arrests, protesters um, in the way that I saw it, we're demonstrating peacefully with a crowd of a, less than 200 people chanting uh, on Speedway, the main stretch through campus. And that is when they were first met with an overwhelming DPS response. And students and, and many faculty and some First Amendment lawyers I've spoken to say that um, the university shut this protest down before they broke any rules. Even though they were directed to cancel the protest, it's not clear whether the university had the right to direct them to cancel it because state law and university rules say that anybody, student or not, can come on campus and make their voice heard regardless of the content of their speech. So a lot of people uh, are worried that both state law and the First Amendment may have been uh, infringed upon, at least on Wednesday. Yeah, state lawmakers passed legislation that's supposed to protect free speech activities on campus. How is that playing out with these protesters? So that's called Senate Bill 18. It was passed in, in 2019, and it really enshrines in law many of the protections that already existed under the First Amendment. It, it directs universities to explicitly lay out that their common areas on campus must be open for free speech regardless of the content of the speech and regardless of if somebody is affiliated with the university or not. Looking forward, how does this all end? Well, for the students part, they say that these protests are not going to end until their demands are met in full. I think I can say pretty objectively that their demands are not going to be met. So I think the most immediate concern for the university is graduation. Graduation ceremonies are coming up uh, this weekend and I asked the protesters point blank, do you plan to protest graduation? Their response was, no comments. So we'll be watching to see how that plays out and how the university responds if they need to farther. Definitely. Thank you very much, Ryan. Faculty could play a key role in the future of UT's president. This relationship is really important. And when um, the relationship is broken, uh, I think this is damaging. We look at the potential impact of a signed statement of no confidence on university leadership. Plus, promises of more protests come amid questions about the police response, the calls for change, and the show of support ahead on this special edition of State of Texas.